Hello folks and welcome to part two of our series where I'll be attempting to equip you with all of the knowledge you need to make your first buying decisions as you enter into Infinity Code 1. Last week we covered the Western mega power Pan Oceania, but this week we're going to be looking at Yu Jing, their bitter rivals from the east. We'll start with a lore overview of the whole faction, and then we'll go over unit by unit of all the units available to Yu Jing except for the mercenaries. I'll show you what the miniatures look like, as well as giving you a rough idea of their battlefield role and telling you in which boxed products you can buy those miniatures. So before we get into all of that, just a quick reminder to hit that subscribe button and enable notifications if you want to stay up to date on what's going on here on the channel. And if you like this video, please do remember to give it a thumbs up so that YouTube shows it to more people. Right then, let's talk about Yu Jing. Yu Qing, the Asian giant the second most powerful nation in the human sphere, combining multiple Eastern cultures into one. Combining past traditions with new technology, they are a dangerous nation, trying to gain the upper hand by manipulation and force. And now that we have a very basic idea of who Yu Qing are, let's take a look at their offering of units. Remember the purpose of this is to give you a basic idea to help you figure out the units that you might want to own and how you're going to go about acquiring them. There's not going to be any deep tactica or deep lore in any of what you're about to see. However, if you are interested in those things, websites like Human Sphere or Infinity the Wiki are great places that you can check those things specifically out. So with that said, let's jump into the unit overview. Much like the Fusiliers of Pano, Zanshi are the basic line trooper of Yu Qing. That said, they have some subtle differences that can matter. Whilst Zanshi are a point worse in shooting than a Fusilier, say, they're two points better in close combat. As expected, there's a paramedic, a hacker, a lieutenant variant all available, as well as a few different weapon loadouts. Your first source for Zanshi is likely to be the Operation Kaldstrom box, however there's also a Sniper, HMG and Missile variant in a separate Zanshi box. The Yu Qing paint set also includes an exclusive Forward Observer miniature. The Imperial Agents of Yu Qing are specialist light infantry and carry a range of nasty weapons. Notable among these is the Chain Colt, which is a template weapon. You'll also notice that these cheap infantry have plus one inch to their dodge for some added manoeuvrability, as well as a whopping 18 close combat score. However, you're only allowed two in your list, and they can be twice the points of a Zanshi, so only take them if you have a specific job in mind for them to do. You'll find the Zhanying Hacker in Yu Qing Booster Box Alpha. The Imperial Service Starter Set contains a Zhanying with Missile Launcher. Tigers are a drop troop with parachutist and combat jump as well as mimetism minus three to make them harder to hit in shooting. They have a solid ballistic skill and great close combat and are available in hacker and paramedic flavors too. However, they have zero biotechnical shield which can make them vulnerable to certain types of attacks and the better variants are three points a model with a limit of three models per list. You'll find this hacker variant in Yu Qing Booster Pack Beta. There's also boarding shotgun and Spitfire variants in their own blister. Zhu Yong Invincibles are the first heavy infantry option we see in the army list. And the first thing you'll notice is that they're alarmingly cheap and you're allowed five in a list. Add in Dodge Plus One, a bevy of weapon options, paramedic and lieutenant variants, and it's easy to see why these are a bread and butter unit. Remember though that as heavy infantry, Zhu Yong are hackable, meaning enemy hackers can disable them. You'll find the multi-rifle Zhu Yong in Booster Pack Beta, there's an HMG version that comes on its own in a blister, and there's a bunch of variants in the Invincible Army starter set. Yanhuo are another of Yu Qing's deadly infantry options, being solely armed with big old guns like the HMRC, which for UK folks is not Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs, but is actually the Hyper Rapid Magnetic Cannon. They also have a good enough BS to use them, which matters. They benefit from heavy armour and multiple wounds, making them a scary gun platform. Downsides are mostly that they're four to four and a half points each, a little slow moving, and you're only allowed two in your list. 
but of course they are also hackable. You'll find the dual missile launcher version in booster pack beta and the HRMC one in its own blister. Yet again, we still find ourselves in heavy infantry territory with these highly armoured multi-wound beasts. However, more so than their stat line and their loadout options, what makes Dolphe scary is their range of stealth options. With camouflage, infiltration, surprise attack, an extra inch of dodge, and mimetism minus three, you can put them where you want and let them do whatever they need to do. That said, all this punch does come at a price. Five points per model to be precise, as well as a limit of one per army usual hacker warning also applies. You'll find Adolfo with Spitfire in the Operation Caldstrom box. Outside of that, other versions are out of production, so you would need to do some savvy eBay scouring. How about a unit very similar to the Adolfo, but with more armor, way better hacking protection, and terrifying close combat potential thanks to a dual action weapon and a 19cc value. Meet the Hacktow. And as if all that wasn't enough to draw you in, they have added stealth skills, surprise attack, camouflage, an extra inch of dodge, and mimetism minus six. Hacktow are the meat-seeking missile of Yu Ching. Pick a target and watch them go. All that said, you're allowed one per list, so expect it to be a prime target for your opponent, and at six points, it's also getting very close to tag territory in terms of cost. You need to make sure your hack tower is doing work. Currently, you can find a hack tower hacker in Yu Ching Booster Pack Alpha, which is a fine model to use for all of the variants, really. You may find this hard to believe, but we're not quite done with Yu Ching's heavy infantry. The Sien Warriors fulfill an interesting multi purpose role. With multi spectral visor level 2, they're great at sniffing out enemy stealth troops. They also have a beefy 6 points of biotechnical shield to defend against those non physical attacks. They're insane in close combat with CC 21 and an AP close combat weapon, as well as martial arts level 1. They even get plus 1 inch on their dodge. What's more, they have a specialist operative option for fulfilling those specialist operative specific mission conditions and a nice range of weaponry at that. At four and a half to five points, they don't even feel too expensive for everything that they bring to the table and you're even allowed a pair of them. And whilst I admit my experience is very limited at the time of recording this, but on paper these certainly seem like an auto-include. You'll find the CN with Heavy Machine Gun in Booster Pack Alpha. And there's also a single CN Warriors Blister, which has the multi-rifle variant. Okay, we're finally done with Heavy Infantry and straight into some reasonably decent skirmishers with the Gui Long. You'll see all the pretty typical skirmisher goodness here with multi-spectral visor level 1, surprise attack, camouflage, infiltration, mimetism minus 3, and an extra inch of dodge. Guilong also have hacker, lieutenant, and specialist operative types, the latter of which could be especially enticing as a midfield objective grabber. The main downside, and one that's common to a lot of skirmishers, is that if they encounter any enemy units with MSV, they're likely very dead very fast. They range from 2 to 3 points depending on loadout and you're allowed up to 2 in a list. You'll find a Guilong in the Operation Coldstrom box, but outside of that I failed to find any other current sculpts for them. A slightly different flavour of skirmishing here now, uh, ninjas have all the skills you'd expect to make them super sneaky, such as Mimitism minus 6, Surprise Attack, Camouflage and Infiltration. Where they take a swerve is in giving up any real aggressive shooting in favour of some gnarly close combat output. Pick your favourite flavour of dual action or armour piercing CC weapon, add in martial arts level 3 and a CC stat of 23 and enjoy sneaking in and just blending whatever your opponent leaves unguarded. Ninjas are 3 points per model and you're allowed up to 2. Ninjas come in their own blister pack sold as a single mini, they're not to be confused however with kunai ninjas which are a separate thing. Unlike in my Panoceania video, I'm going to be smart enough to group these all together. 
They're the cheap and effective repair units for Yu Ching. The Zhanxi Yisheng fixes people, the mech engineer fixes machines, and the helper remotes let you do so without getting the units themselves into too much danger. One cool difference you might spot between Yu Ching's support models and Pano's, for example, is that the Yu Ching ones have plus one on their dodge, something that you'll find you see a lot across Yu Ching's miniature range. You'll find all of these models boxed neatly together in the Yu Ching support pack. Again, another group of profiles here, but they all have the same stat line and it's just the equipment that differs. Yu Ching have a similar offering of remotes to Pan O, and indeed most factions in Code 1. There's a button pushing one, there's one that's a terrifying sentry gun, one with a missile launcher, and a sneaky mimetism one. They're very cheap and faster than most infantry, but they're also not that hard to kill and can be hacked by enemy hackers and shut down. Yao Kong remotes come in packs of two with all the weapon options available in the pack. Well, this is Yu Ching, so we are back to heavy infantry, and not for the last time, believe it or not. The Shangji definitely have a couple of nice party pieces, though. They have dodge plus two inches, so you can have fun in the reactive turn, cheesing extra movement. They also all carry the Chain Colt, that tasty damage 13 template weapon that we mentioned earlier. They even have BTS 6, making them quite capable of not getting spanked by the first hacker to get them in their sights. They are also fairly aggressively costed at uh, three and a half to four points with uh, an AVA of three. So there's really just not a ton of downside. The Shangji hacker you've been looking at here comes from the Beyond Coldstrom box. However, there's also a separate box with HMG, rocket launcher, and multi rifle versions. It also contains a tin bot, which I believe is currently an N4 only remote add on for the unit. There's really not a ton that needs to be said here. The Hundun is a very solid medium infantry sniper unit. They have surprise attack, camouflage, mimetism minus three to keep them doing their job well, and they come in two different flavors. One has multi-spectral visor level one, making it a good anti-stealth trooper sniper. The other has a deadly multi-sniper rifle, which has the option of dual action shooting. You'll find the multi-sniper variant in Operation Coldstrom, and that's, well, about it for now. Yi Mao are a pretty sweet medium infantry unit for filling a number of roles. They have armor 2 and biotechnical shield 6, so they're fairly capable of surviving if you keep them in cover. They also have multi-spectral visor level 1 and mimetism minus 3 for a little bit of sneaky or anti-sneaky value. They have super jump for some added mobility options, and most of the loadouts include a chain cult for punishing those enemy bottlenecks with your template. There's very little not to like here, but they are AVA2, so you can't lean too heavily into them. You'll find a Yi Bao equipped with an AP Spitfire in the Beyond Coldstrom expansion box. Not wanting to stray too long from heavy infantry, next up Yu Ching offers us the Jujak Regiment, a very aggressively costed heavy infantry option. You'll find a broad range of fairly straightforward weapons here, including template weapons if that's your jam. Jujaks also have a decent enough ballistic skill to get the job done in shooting, but have some tasty close combat capability too against your average trooper. Their armor 3 is going to be very solid if you keep them in cover and at range, especially with two wounds to soak through. But as heavy infantry with a BTS of only 3, enemy hackers will be able to put them down quickly if they really make a concerted effort to do so. We have a Jujak with combi rifle and heavy flamethrower in the Operation Coldstrom box, but there's also a separate box with some other loadouts available, if that's your kind of thing. And rounding out the non-mercenary units for Yu Ching, we have their tag option for Code 1, the Blue Wolf. There's only one loadout for a Blue Wolf, but what that loadout is, with weapon options that are good for literally... Any situation that's short to medium range is pretty good. These things have Armor 6, BTS 6, Structure 6, Ballistic Skill 14, and a whopping 23 in close combat. They are a very scary unit to deal with. Add to this that they also get plus one damage in shooting, an extra shot, an extra inch on their dodge, and they really feel like a tooled up nightmare. Thankfully for your opponent, you only get one, and if their hacker can make it past that BTS-6, it's an expensive unit to lose quickly. 
The Blue Wolf Mongol Cavalry, like all tags, comes in its own separate box, but it's also one of the cheapest tags in real world money, which is pretty sweet if you're a Yu Ching player. And so that brings our trip down Yu Ching Lane to a conclusion. It should be pretty clear at this point that Yu Ching are the faction who absolutely loves heavy infantry. So if you're a fan of the way Infinity approaches their power armored look, this is going to be a faction you'll enjoy. And with some great stealth and close combat options on top of that, Yu Ching are definitely a really tempting prospect for a brand new player to the game. Of course, it also bears mentioning that if that yellow color scheme scares you, don't worry, Infinity is not one of these games where you have to paint according to the color scheme of the box art. You can go with whatever color you like. So folks, what do you think of Yu Ching? Let me know in the comments below if this faction interests or excites you, if you're indeed thinking of picking them up for Code 1 or even for N4. And until next time, I'd like to thank you very much for watching my video, wish you a happy hobbying, and say goodbye for now. I'll see you in the next one, folks.